I take the lowest selling products, not the hero products, and on those, I will attach the higher discount that can be 30%. On the hero products, the ones that are selling the most, I don't give the 30%. Why? Because it is where the margin will get so low that at a certain point, or the cost per new customer goes down a lot, or we are actually just gifting you know, products. People buy the best sellers anyway. What we found in many, in many instances is that this group of people who are buying with the discounts, actually they stay loyal to the brand for all the rest of the year. Yes. So the biggest impact that we saw is that when a brand is doing a great job in Q4, then it has even the cash flow coming from these customers that are buying with high, the high impulsive uh, behavior for Q1 and Q2. When many were failing in Q4, then they struggled as well in Q1 and Q2 because they didn't have a um, returning mm -hmm. customer base from these periods where it is easier to acquire new customers. Das vierte Quartal 2023 fängt an und das ist für jeden Online-Händler, für jede E-Commerce-Brand die absolute Peak-Season im Jahr. Ich habe heute fast schon wieder eine Weltpremiere, denn ich habe meinen Co-Founder Emanuele Maranjo hier am Start. Wir werden jetzt gleich auf Englisch switchen, denn äh, Emanuele ist Italiener, wir sprechen hauptsächlich Englisch, wenn wir miteinander sprechen. Er kann zwar auch ein bisschen Deutsch, aber ich will es ihm nicht so schwierig machen, deswegen ganz einfach in Englisch. Das heißt, ähm, I will switch to English now. Emma, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me and looking forward for this Q4 as every year. I was just thinking, I think our last podcast together was 2021, maybe? Yeah. I don't know if we did a, a podcast episode last year, but I'm always happy when you're here because then we, we throw out all the golden nuggets, all the insights, and uh, you're the master of giving value. So I'm really happy that you're here. Looking forward. And a lot has happened since the last uh, podcast that we did. So we have new things, new value to deliver. So let's do it. Amazing. So the topic for today is Q4 Black Friday for e -com. We will talk about offers, we will talk about sales event, we will talk about Facebook ads, which is your most passionate uh, topic. We will talk about uh, multi-channel approaches, strategies, and so on. Just to give you guys a little bit of context, um, last year in Q4, we generated 48 million euros for our clients, which is just insane. And uh, we will share with you all the insights, all the strategies we use and which we also use this year. So I'm pumped. Cool. From where do we start? From where do we start? I would start with um, quick context to what we basically do, because I think a lot of watchers and listeners might not know us. Um, so Emma and me, we are the co-founders of Ecom House. We are a growth partner for D2C brands. And what we basically do is we focus on strategy, marketing, meta ads to bring brands on the fastest way to eight figures a year. And um, so we have all the insights working with all the brands, all the different approaches in different niches. I think we worked with over 60 verticals, 60 niches, from fashion to jewelry to accessories, beauty, automotive. supplements, automotive. So um, we got a lot of knowledge to share with you today. I would add uh, on top of this, like that it is the this year the fourth um, Q4 of the agency we can see constantly how important it is to iterate on the learnings of the last year and constantly even innovate to don't be like all the others because at the end the competition will be the biggest enemy in this period. Yes. So I would like to start with why is actually Q4 so important, especially for e-commerce brand owners? Um, We have some notes here um, that we don't forget the most important things. One thing I would like to start off is a lot of brands struggling usually in Q3 because people are on vacation, uh, the children are not in the school and they are somewhere else in another country. And um, so the, the buying intent is not so strong in Q3. In Q4, things are looking totally different. So um, if you want, please share with yes. you why, why do you think Q4 is so different? Yes, so I would say uh, we have experienced in the last four years really a lot of changes. Uh, first with COVID, uh, then with iOS 14. So it was never calm and I would say re repetitive as the year before. I believe right now we are in the first year that we can go back uh, to say, cool, P2 
people have traveled a lot during Q3. We have seen some of our uh, partners um, having a dip uh, in the in the scale. On the other side, all people now are coming back, and they are coming back where they have obviously invested a lot of their money in um, travel activities and experiences. The consequence now is that they are missing the part about buying. And where is this buying intent coming? We can always thank uh, a lot Amazon, who was, I believe, the first one to put yes. in the minds of people this Q4, Black Friday, Christmas vibe where you want to save. Everyone wants to save. And it is used in the, in the, in the mind uh, to save for the things that otherwise they, will, they would have spent more money. So that's the biggest concept that we see. There is a demand in the mind of people because they are trained from big, big uh, corporations like Amazon, for instance, or Zalando, or mm -hmm. uh, all the other big ones. And mostly they know that all the brands will do something, if not all, 98%, let's put just aside Apple, that maybe is like the only one not doing anything. And they are ready to wait for the last moment to save the biggest amount of money to have what they would have had with the same price. 100%. You said just uh, something super interesting with um, Amazon, and I think Prime Day is the best example yeah. for Amazon. To It's basically their Black Friday. And I think this year was the first time they did even twice, like two Black Fridays for them, which is insane. Um, another thing to add is Q4 is also... Uh, you said like the big corporates, but all, I would also say the um, all the media is training the consumer that, hey, uh, Christmas season is ahead, uh, Black Friday, you can save so much money. And then you have all the, the experience from last year's. And if you just Google Black Friday on, on, on Google and then pictures, like people go crazy, for example, in the United States. Um, plus, it's Christmas time. Plus, it's colder, so people spend more time on the sofa being bored and uh, just scroll um, through social media. So a lot of things are adding up, and that is the reason why Q4 is so important and special. And at the end, we, we always see that it is or a big uh, moment for brands or a big miss for brands. So not always we have had some brands just staying on the line and say, yeah, it was a good or it was a really good period or it was a losing period. Mm -hmm. That will be where the preparation and all the topics that we'll discuss today will help to, to make it big, potentially. And even depending on the on the niche, so we yeah. figured out, for example, jewelry or like in especially gifting products, usually brands who sell those type of products, they do up to 60, sometimes even 70% of their yearly revenue in just two months, which is November and December. So it's even more important to them that be pre uh, good prepared and everything. Yeah. Absolute. And... Um, Last but not least, uh, it's always important to remember that uh, at the end, it is a cycle. Uh, the last thing that uh, we were not sure in the first year of the agency is that if all these people that are buying for Black Friday, Christmas, then are repetitive buyers, yes. increasing the lifetime value, or like if they are really buyers that they are not only uh, driven to buy for the sale. And what we found in many, th in many instances is that the cohorts, this group of people who are buying with the discounts, actually, they stay loyal to the brand for all the rest of the year. Yes. So the biggest impact that we saw is that when a brand is doing a great job uh, in Q Q4, then it has even the cash flow coming from these ca customers that are buying with high, uh, in, uh, with a high impulsive uh, behavior for Q1 and Q2. When many were failing in Q4, then they have struggles as well in Q1 and Q2 because they didn't have a um, returning mm -hmm. customer base from these periods where it is easier to acquire new customers. 100%. And I think a lot of brand owners, they always have this objection, no, I, I'm, I shouldn't do any discounts. I shouldn't do any offer because it's devaluating my brand. I want to um, tell a little insight. Um, we work, I think, for half an hour two and a half years with one beauty brand. I don't share the name right now. Um, but basically, this brand grew from nearly zero to close to 30 million this year yeah. in just two and a half years. I was checking in Triple Whale the uh, customer cohort data for my last webinar about Q4. And I figured out those customers we acquired in November, December with like offers and discounts and so on, they even had a higher LTV, so customer lifetime value, 
over the next 12 months or close close to 12 months because when I was checking it was like 10 months um, and that was super interesting because the fact that people buy with offers and having a, like being loyal and so on is the proof that brand owners don't destroy their brand when they give a strategic discount absolutely uh, I would say two things there are uh, let's let's call it not so smart offers where you just decrease the profit margin and it is done and then people are not having a great experience with uh, with the brand so they are not coming back because obviously you you have win a customer but you need to retain the customer with a nice brand experience and nice uh, valuable products or there are smart offers that they are uh, there to increase the perceived value of what mm -hmm. the people will get and the brand itself and when it is done right First, you can outbid the competition, as uh, you mentioned in this, uh, in this case of the beauty brand. Second, when the brand is strong and the experience is strong, this goes back to really the great job that uh, this brand is doing since years, people stick with the brand. So uh, we have the two uh, components of winning customers where they want to buy new things, mm -hmm. they want to have new experiences, and retaining them when... Uh, it is harder to acquire new customers because there is not the hype behind that. 100%. Yeah. Let's walk through. So um, we prepared this um, this interview, this conversation with like, a, how do you say, in, in German you say Roter Faden, mm -hmm. which is like a step by step by yeah. step by step. Um, so first off, I would like to start with the question, in Q4, what are the typical sales events brands should use? Yeah. So I would say um, there can always be a sales event uh, made up. Uh, on the other side, we want to um, constantly align a sales event with the consumer psychology of people. When they are thinking, okay, or where, when they are trained, um, I know that in one week there will be something where I can save money. Cool. When with the brand, we are able to align the demand from the, from the user plus with an offer, that is not just monetary, but it is like a package where we have customized uh, uh, product offering for, for the user. Uh, we are aligning the desire to the product. First, that every brand can exploit is obviously Halloween, okay? There are obviously many brands that are maybe perceiving it as a childish uh, mm -hmm. way of things. We have tested it many times, it works. Um, it could be the first one where there is a strong um, consumer demand and buying intent. Um, it's not the strongest. This Just to add on this, yes. sorry to interrupt you. Um, uh, super interesting. It's actually really smart to use this kind of um, reasons to make a sale because people have their awareness. Everyone knows Black Friday, so it's just <clears throat> using this momentum and this awareness of the customer, of the audience, to, pull, to push out an offer, and Halloween is a good example, yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, after that, uh, we have seen working more and more uh, the singles day. Yes. <laughs> so I remember in the first year of the ages, we were thinking, mm, yeah, what is this? Who is actually caring about that? Only, you know, couples. Yeah. At the end, we discovered, not doing the first year and seeing other uh, doing that, that mm, we were missing something. So the second year that uh, in the ages, we tested it, and it was highly successful. Mm -hmm. uh, even more, I would say, in the U.S. market, um, where it is more established. There, obviously, you can say, uh, why should I have uh, an offer for Halloween and then one for Singles Day and then one for Black Friday? At the end, what we saw is that we are constantly uh, attracting different people because many times the people who give attention to Halloween as a mess marketing messaging, they don't care that much about a, a Singles Day messaging mm -hmm. and vice versa. And a uh, suggestion on, on that side... Um, the, the discount or the monetary uh, offer is important for sure, but even more how you frame that offer to say, this is right for you if mm -hmm. you are a lover, you have a family, you want to, have a, you, you want to give a nice gift to your friend. So uh, this is like where the marketing creativity is coming out. Uh, and at the end, just to add the last thing, um, Everyone has the chance to put a 20% discount or a 10% discount. But who will win is who is like able to channel that discount with the product to a really specific need or like 
mm-hmm. desire of the user. That's like where the marketing creativity is like making the biggest impact. Absolutely, and we go to the to the creatives and the offer building um, in a second. But was what was really interesting. I remember it was like 2020 when we did our first single stay together, mm-hmm. uh, like in the company, and uh, we had this one client selling luggage. If you remember. <laughs> Um, and it was like super high priced luggage, like 800 euros for a luggage. Uh, during to, COVID. During COVID. So the whole brand collapsed with the lockdown because nobody uh, was allowed to travel anymore. Um, and then there was the single day. So there was this idea of, hey, let's let's run an irresistible offer for a single stay. And we were like, mm, we're not sure, like single stay. And then we re- researched a little bit. Okay, it's, a, it's very well known from China, basically. It's like their Black yeah. Friday. And we had nothing to lose, actually. <laughs> and we had nothing to lose. So we, we, we built this bundle. Um, and uh, I think in three seconds, we sold 70,000 euros of inventory in lockdown period where no one was allowed to travel with planes. So there was no specific reason to buy luggage, but uh, the reason was more than enough to to get them to buy. And fun fact, um, even though we will talk about all the sales event in Q4, for people it's, it's uh, you can even made up things like how often we use the birthday of yeah, the absolutely. brand or the birthday of the founder or uh, the birthday of the dog of the founder, fa- whatever, yeah? So people just, just need a reason. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, so that, that's what I was uh, I was meaning when I said every moment could be good for mm-hmm. a sale. In the moment where we align it for a sale, for a proper promotion, not just discount, for a proper uh, thought promotion. In the moment, though, when we channel both the demand that people are thinking about Halloween, Black Friday, Christmas, whatever, with the right offer, that's like where you, you get... Two birds with one hook, as, as we say in Italy. 100%. Okay, so we have Halloween, we have Singles Day. What's yeah. next? Then I would always say there is the big one that it is. I don't call it Black Friday anymore. It's like mm-hmm. uh, pretty much for everyone a Black Week, if not even more. So that is like where usually, at least from the Sunday before uh, Black Friday, so usually like five days before, we start running the uh, Black Week, Black Friday promotion, okay? Uh, what we saw, even like testing, is that if it if it starts too early, it's not strong enough because people start thinking, ah, I could still save more if mm-hmm. I wait another few days. If it is too late, uh, many people have already spent in other brands, so then it is uh, hard to, to make them paying for, for, for the brand itself. So what we found is that, is that when it is at least one week before Black Friday is like the sweet spot. Some will start at the beginning of November. Some will start yeah. Black Friday. What has worked really well for us is between one week and maximum 10 days before mm-hmm. Black Friday itself. And what is important there, obviously? Uh, <laughs> I would say a strong preparation of three, two, three quarters before. <laughs> as, yeah. as, as seems like cliche, but uh, it's harder and harder for a brand to just invent a Black Friday and crush it if they were not really doing a foundational work uh, in the months before. Uh, But the components are, obviously, there is a a price tag. So if we don't give them enough uh, reasons to buy from us, we lose them. If we don't communicate them enough reasons, like uh, rational reasons to buy from us, there will be other 10 offering similar products. Mm -hmm. If we are not good enough at aligning all the channels, we'll just make a mess. So far, if one of the biggest learning that we that we got in the years were start to make simple, stupid setups, yeah, because they are the ones working the best. Okay, absolutely. Um, You just said something interesting. So I'm always saying um, a strong, uh, strong Black Friday starts in January. Yeah with uh, all the marketing approach, with the messaging, with the penetrating of the audience, and then finally you give them the big reason to buy. I believe three, four years ago was not that <coughs> hard, but right now when the attentions on social media or uh, advertising channels are dropped that much, where uh, pretty much it's more and more difficult to have a unique product. Yes. Uh, where all the people got used uh, to... Um, get hit by brands with multiple touch points before convincing them to buy. 
uh, it's not easy anymore to just say, hey, I'm a new brand. I started two months ago. Uh, I start and I'm scaling up as it was four years ago. I remember four years ago, a brand could start from zero and still make a really great Q4. Right now, and even like last year, I believe we saw some brands trying to do that and getting smashed in the face mm-hmm. so hard because people now want to know who there is behind the brand before 100%. buying. Absolutely. So um, there was a, there was the Black Week, and uh, you shared a lot of insights. Um, I think with the majority of brands, we started on the weekend before yeah. Black Friday, and we had big success. Yeah. Um, because even though like brands started with like Black Week, the most of them they started on a Monday, and we started I think on Saturday, which was uh, really really great. Um, so we have the Black Week, then we have the strongest day of the year, usually for the brands, which is the Black Friday. Yes. Yeah. And then Saturday, usually there's a little bit less revenue. And then on Sunday, where you use all the, hey, last chance uh, to save money and so on, you also have another spike. Yes. Um, we experienced the last pa- uh, couple of months, uh, not months, <laughs> years, that uh, Cyber Monday usually is not so strong as the Sunday. Yeah. So um, a few inputs there. We realized, and we tested a lot, uh, to say, what if we keep running the Black Friday yeah. or Black Week offer versus changing everything to Cyber Monday? And we didn't notice that much of a difference. So on a, uh, on a percentage, uh, we, we see that 80% of the sales of the volumes are done during the Black Week, Black Friday, and then potentially another 20% on the Cyber Monday Cyber Week, whatever we want to call it, okay? Um, I believe this for two reasons. People get so hyped about Black Friday, Black Week, and so on, that obviously they spend the most. Mm -hmm. And when we want to squeeze even more out of the last people, we get the 20%. So obviously when we do right the 80%, we get the biggest chunk. The second reason for that is we realize that when we are really strong, most in the push uh, marketing channels, being Meta, TikTok, uh, whatever, uh, all the learnings about the sales that are getting in the ads, in the, in, in the campaigns, they stay if you don't mess up the structure from scratch. And when from, let's say, Black Friday to Cyber Monday, we want to change completely all the messaging, this means starting from zero almost. And at the end, the trade-off is we decided and we saw the biggest impact, keeping running Black Friday offers, Black Week offers, whatever you want to call them, till Monday or till Tuesday. Yes. And this was the most efficient, even like in workload uh, of brands, the most streamlined and the ones that were giving the advertising platform the highest chance to perform. Absolutely. And then when Black Friday is over, another peak season yeah. starts, which is the gifting season, Christmas. So usually we use, um, even like in Germany, it's the Nikolaus Day, which is the 6th of December. Normally we don't run um, advertising campaigns. Typically we we run like email marketing and maybe an influencer or something, but mostly email marketing in the back end. But uh, what's super interesting is that basically from the 1st of December, usually until the, the last weekend before Christmas, which was last year, I think like the 17th or 18th of yeah. um, December, People want and need to buy Christmas gifts. And um, especially with jewelry brands, the, the December is often more strong than actually the November yeah. because people like usually gift jewelry. Um, I have seen a lot of brands which, um, which I ordered, which didn't work with us in the past years, who missed a big opportunity and didn't spend enough on meta ads in Christmas. Usually the chart is like the, the revenue goes goes up like this until like the last weekend and then it's a drop because of Christmas. And um, when I audit ad accounts, I often see that brands are not spending enough in December. So basically the demand is high from the beginning of the December, so they underspend. And especially on the weekends, we see the strongest peaks, right? So... Yeah, I can add a few things on there. Um, So first of all, uh, everyone can go on uh, Google Trends and see exactly that as soon as the Black Friday period uh, is ending, uh, pretty much on the Monday, uh, Cyber Monday is like ending, then 
if we start looking for Christmas gifting or, mm-hmm. and all these keywords, that is the start, okay? So one of the biggest, as you mentioned, one of the biggest, uh, let's say, missed opportunities, not mistake, but missed opportunities that many brands are not taking advantage is waiting too long to start switching offers yeah. or marketing communications or messaging or ads all towards Christmas period. Because from literally the first, actually 29 uh, of November, uh, 1st of December, you can see how people are looking for that. Mm-hmm. And the demand is there in the mind of people. So you want to channel immediately your product with the demand of people, right? And um, what we obviously saw as well is when a brand is even thinking out of the box in a new uh, bundle offer messaging that is really tapping into this consumer demand, uh, consumer desire about Christmas gifting or Christmas savings, you have the double of the chance to scale on push channels. Yes. How long does it last? So usually we saw that the, the biggest uh, period is between the 6th of uh, December uh, up to the, as you mentioned, the 17th, 18th of December. Then people start, uh, start um, having the fear that the package will not arrive at home and so exactly. on. So there is already the, the decrease. Um, on the other side, the brands, just to give even another uh, little nugget, the brand that are putting on the website, a uh, order till mm-hmm. the 22nd, 23rd and receive before Christmas, they will have the chance to exploit other three, four days of scale yes. on push channels that at the end, they are high volumes, again, to win customer for the rest of the year. 100%. So you reach all the people who didn't bought uh, a Christmas gift and who do- don't want to disappoint the girlfriend, the family and so on. So that's a really great chance to, to outbid the competition. The, another very important sales event, basically, and I don't think that enough, bra- like a lot of brands are using it. Uh, Meta is calling it Q5. Yeah. Um, so usually what happens, there's a, a big, big drop in front of like the 23rd and the 24th of December because people had the, bought the gift and so on, uh, families and so on. But then starting from the 25th, people start rebuying again and start purchasing product because... They mostly they have holidays, so they sit at home with the families yeah. on the sofa, maybe even bored. <laughs> um, they are scrolling around on their um, mobile phones or even laptops on social media. They maybe got uh, money from the Christmas, from the family, from friends, and so on. Um, so that is all from the com- consumer side and from the strategy side. The majority of brands they stop their advertising campaigns for the year. So. 2023 is done. Uh, we advertised enough. So the CPM is usually lower than yeah. in the in the weeks before. So a lot of things come together. And this is typically the moment where we run like New Year's Eve campaigns, basically until mid of January. And it, it works amazingly well, right? I, I wish less people would talk about Q5. So it will stay still like uh, something <laughs> not, not exploited from everyone. Maybe but, not a secret. But, out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I would say with the years, more and more people are understanding the power of that. Uh, I add one point why it is so strong, because uh, we need to remember that there are big corporations, uh, I don't know, BMW, Coca-Cola, so on, that are constantly advertising on, on the on the social media or Google channels. And in those periods, is like where the big, the bigger the corporations, the less willingness to you know do a complicate the life there is because everyone has holidays. And it is where the uh, the brands, mostly DTC brands be, below 100 mil a year, can exploit because we are known to be faster, leaner, more mm-hmm. on the point to grasp any opportunity. And um, few important considerations on that. Um, we saw that the, the strongest period is, yes, when we start uh, at the end of December, le- like 27, 26, 27, but usually the first days are a little bit weaker. The The big scales uh, for us start always around the 2nd mm-hmm. of uh, January. Why? Because obviously many people for the New Year's Eve are constantly having fun, having um, parties and so on. So their mind is not there to think about what could I buy. They just think about which experiences would they like to have to enjoy. Yes. Then from the 2nd, the boredom starts. Yes. So 
everyone has visited the families, the cousins, the whatever, the grandma, the grandpa. I said, yeah, but like it's boring. And um, in, in Europe, mostly, the, the weather is not that good. So what do you do? You hang out on social media to, to win boredom. And if we combine this boredom with a willingness to uh, think, what would I like to do this year? There is mm-hmm. this new year, mm-hmm. new me, new, new goal mindset. Uh, then we can tap our product in those needs, right? Again, it's like connecting needs of the user with the, the solution, with the product. Uh, if we add on that the, the layer of cheaper cost to reach people, that is like uh, the CPM, at least on Meta, but it's pretty much in all the other channels, we can win so many people's eyes, attention, we can get so much attention with a cheaper price that mm-hmm. many times is like the best period of the year. Uh, sometimes even better than the black week itself yes. for the for the efficiency of the return on the ad spend. 100%. So to summarize, um, basically, Halloween, Singles Day, Black Week, Black Friday until Cyber Monday, yeah. Nikolaus with emails, Christmas and Q4, uh, Q5 and uh, New Year's Eve are the strongest events to yeah. run promotional campaigns in Q4. Um, we talked a lot about offers and discounts and saving profits and so on. Um, I would like to switch the topic now to what is actually an offer, what is a good offer and how an e-commerce brand can make basically make the most profit out of an offer and not uh, like burning their profits, their margins. Um, to enter in this topic, I want to tell a little story about uh, my mother-in-law, the mother of my girlfriend. Um, so the story is, we walked through Munich for the city mm-hmm. center and there are all the shops, right? And the goal was that we go for lunch at Condesa, which is like an amazing uh, Mexican place here in Munich. I really shout out everyone who likes Mexican food, go there. Um, so we walked through the city center next to the shops and we just wanted to go for food, nothing to purchase, right? What she did was she was running basically in different shops and bought a ton of products. So she came out with all the big bags and uh, stuff. And I asked, hey, uh, Crystal, why did you purchase products? I thought we'd just go straight to the lunch, right? And she was like, yeah, you know, um, they had up to 50% off. They had uh, buy two, get one free offers and so on. So I, I, m- I needed to buy. I, I must buy the products. And I was like, interesting. So... I learned that way that offers make people buy, even though they didn't want to buy something. So you get those impulse buys. And that's the big reason why offers are so effective. Let's talk about what are the best practice offers in Q4 for all the promotional campaigns so that the brands make the most profits because you can also do it wrong and burn your margin, which is not the goal of the exercise. So um, we developed, and this is basically what we also do in our agency, helping our e-commerce clients or partners to build bundles and discounts and offers where they get the most profit out of it. So we discovered basically three layers of offers. Do you want to talk about it? Yes. So I will start first and foremost, what to not do. (laughs) Yes. So just having the Euro products and putting them 30% off without even thinking what is the profit margin left just to run an offer. We saw... way too often that just for the reason that offers is like equal discounts that not true uh, that many brands or like e-commerce owners are just dropping the price not even thinking of the consequences um we instead try to think about three layers of offers where the persuasiveness and the uh, you know, impulsive desire for the offer is like increasing over time. Well, uh, level by level. The first one, obviously, is like with the classical uh, discounts, where you say you have your Euro product and you attach to it the discount. The majority of e-com uh, brands they don't have just one product, fortunately. So um, the first level will be cool. I take the lowest selling product not the hero products, and on those, I will attach the higher discount that can be 30%, whatever. On the hero products, the one that are selling the most, I don't give the 30%. Why? Because it is where the margin will get so low that at a certain point, or the cost per new customer goes down a lot, or we are actually just gifting, 
you know, products. And people buy it anyway, so people buy the best sellers anyway. So uh, one scenario, and it is the first level, is like giving, putting the high discount possible on the products that are not getting sold, and then going out on the claim up to 30%, where the up to is yes. applying to the lowest selling products. And that's a big hook. Yes, that's the big hook, where we can really go aggressive on the ads and out how to win other competitors potentially. So we talked about the sales events. We talked about why Q4 is so, so important for every e-commerce brand uh, out there. We talked about offers building. We even talked about creatives. In the next episode, we will talk about how to build up the ad account on Meta, how to basically scale them. And we spent a couple of days in Black Week, over 700,000 euros a day in ad spend. So we definitely show you and tell you how we did that. So stay tuned for the second part of this podcast interview and see you there. When we figured out an anomaly in, on Meta in the Facebook ad accounts regarding CPM prices, we figured out that um, with a certain method, we were able to decrease the CPM by 20 to 30%, which means for the same amount of budget, we would reach 20 to 30% more people. So campaigns basically get more profitable yes. at the end.